You just started with Lies of Pi and the combat is giving you trouble. You're still trying to dodge instead of guarding and perfect guarding. Stop with that right now. Let's talk about the combat in Lies of Pi. Why you need to start guarding and perfect guarding and especially how to do it with bigger success every single time. And also a small lesson in weapon handles and blades and how to combine them. At the end of this video, you'll be able to sail through the game They'll struggle with one or the other boss because they can be quite challenging, but at least not get killed by the random puppets in the streets. Now, why guard or perfect guard over dodging, especially during boss fights? Dodging will out use up your stamina, right? So you're not going to be able to hit as you're dodging. But even if you're just normal guarding, you're going to lose a little bit of HP and a little bit of stamina. The thing is, you can gain that HP back straight away by hitting. So even if you fail your perfect guard, even if you fail your timing, it's still better than getting hit because right now, boom, I have all my HP back. That means a guard will always be better than a block unless your opponent is doing a fury attack, which is the rat mark ones. Now, let me explain why perfect guarding is so good versus dodging, why you need both of them in the long run. And afterwards, we're going to go frame by frame through fights and I'll explain the perfect guard points when to exactly press the button and how the pity timer actually works. Dodging will essentially allow you to just avoid damage. The same perfect guarding does. No damage taken, but also no stamina lost. The most important part here is though, you're actually staying in spot. Yes, usually when you dodge, you go away to the left or to the right, which might sometimes bring you out of the range of the boss because he's dashing backwards, sideways or whatsoever. But if you're perfect guarding as he smashes, you're usually just standing right in front of them and can retaliate straight away with damage. And that is for Lies of Pi extremely important because the game is all about aggression and perfect guarding to really get out of tricky situations. The most important part here is rather guard and miss a perfect guard than just being hit. As a good example for perfect guarding, guarding and dodging, we're gonna take the Scrap Watchmen fight because the best combat is gonna utilize all three. There are attacks like these overhead attacks that are extremely easy to perfect guard because they're telegraphed in a long way. But this sideways swipe, for example, can be rather hard to dodge because it winds up, stands still, and then suddenly slaps. Whereas, well, the overhead is a continuous motion that you can essentially follow. Wind up into slam. We're going to go frame by frame through this now to really show you the actual points where to do it. As you see, these were all guards, but they were better than just getting hit. So I just guarded a little bit, got there, stood in position, perfect guard, get him wide broken so we can actually hit him down. And then you can also execute him. And that's why it's so important again to perfect guard. Now let's look frame by frame at the overhead hit. He's charging up his attack and then coming right very long from the back. And you saw me actually blocking very early, right? Let's 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 go back again. A few seconds. He winds up. And already at this moment here, I started blocking. So there's no connection. There's he's not there yet. There's not actually the moment where, you know, you don't have to guard when he's slapping you. You have to guard in the moment where the attack kind of started. Because yes, this was a perfect one. Let's watch that one more in slow motion. Bam. Right there is still up. It's going down, but it's not there yet. And here I block as he's roughly halfway through the motion. Boom. Now, how would that look in normal speed? Boom, hit. He winds up. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And it looks like that I'm blocking in the moment the connection is made. But it's just simply not. And that's why these overhead attacks are so easy to dodge. Whereas the one where he comes from the side and then suddenly slaps out of nowhere, you kind of have to, like, halfway on the way to you already have to press the guard button. But you get to essentially perfectly measure the moment and have the perfect reaction. But overhead, you don't need the perfect reaction because flew in motion. Now, interesting here on this perfect guard is that I'm not using the slight pity timer you have. And that's a few milliseconds. I get hit here, ouch. And now he goes from the right side. And what you notice is I don't have my guard up right now. And I don't have my guard up here. I'm essentially 
very late, but I perfectly get it done at the point of impact. So you can do it on the point of impact, but you don't have to. This time we're gonna go for a side sweeping attack. And as I said, I would rather dodge them often because the timing can be harsh. I mean, I'm losing some HP here and here comes the third one now. And you notice how his arm gets also hidden behind his body, which can make it hard to really get to the hitting point and also to get to the point of the guard because he's kind of dragging his arm afterwards. Goes back all the way and then he kind of drags it out in a very long arc. But here, right now at this point, you could already press the guard button and it would be a perfect guard. But in this case, I essentially hit it right on the hit right on the spot that's the perfect guard here but you saw this before again let me go back we're getting swapped here from the right and the left and we're gonna see where i missed the guard see this is here too early way too early and this is also here way too early already guarded right in both cases but in this case right there where the connection is already made i could have pressed it and it would have been one but I choose to obviously do it right on impact. Here's another example of the side swipe being guarded perfectly. He comes with his arm all the way back. We talked about it, pulls it all the out. And yes, like he's also leaning down <laughs> to really side swipe it. And on the point of impact, and this is here a little bit weird, right? We get the perfect guard done despite there not really being much of actual visual windows to kind of see where you're getting hit. But it's important to look at your opponent there, not necessarily at the impact. Because right now, look where the perfect guard already connects. Like his shoulder is hitting me. His whole motion isn't actually at me. Like his body connected me there. Like look, look at how this looks in bigger speed. Comes around and, and we guard extremely early and yet it still succeeds. And the same goes for the second part of the motion. You see him going back all the way, forward, still have him guarded. And then here at this moment, where his hand is actually not on me already, I guard and it succeeds. So it's not always on impact. There's a different impact point and there's a bit of a pity timer. Do not be scared and get hit sometimes. And the most important part, don't be scared by fury attacks. This is the Overhead smasher, perfect guard, into the fury attack, right? Both arms, but despite it being both arms, goes for the double. It's a fluent motion. It's one, two, three, four, and then... And slowly it descends downwards. And you notice, as he's going down, elbows locked in place, my hand is going up to be there in the moment. And you can instantly retaliate with the damage and keep your stamina especially up. For the blade and handle part, it's important that your blade and your handle together also determine the range of your weapon. For example, I can take a tiny police officer's baton and pair that together with a fire blade axe and truly receive something cursed. That is a fire axe with, well, the tiniest handle in the world but it has the move set of the police officer's baton. So if you actually like this overhead swing, which is quite nice, well, you could take a really long blade, right? So we're taking the police officer's baton and now we're putting on the saber blade or that great sword fate blade that I've been using. And suddenly you have a police officer's baton that chops like the police officer's baton but has the range of a greatsword. Now there's the scaling to pay attention to, but with alter handle, that doesn't really matter that much. For example, I've been using the police officer's baton, but that one has a A tier scaling right now. So you can go for your fire axe handle and can make it a B and C tier for motivity and technique, or you could make it a D and a C tier for technique more, or boost even advance up very highly and keep the others in place. So you can turn any weapon you want into a scaling that you really need. Therefore, if you do enjoy the weapon art of a handle and the range of a handle, no worries, you can still flip it into something that truly is good for you. My best recommendation for early game is the electric oil stick hen that you can buy from a vendor that you meet early. Together with the police officer's baton, creates a weapon 
that can just smash everyone into smithereens. Not only do you have a rather fast attack speed with an okay range, don't worry, it's enough, but you also have this amazing overhead hit. And due to the attack speed with your fabled art of recharging your weapon, you do electricity damage, which the bots are highly vulnerable to. That will make the one or the other boss fight feel rather trivial. Did this help you? Tell me in the comments below. And if you're struggling with something else, also ask in the comments away. I'll be making guides for Lies of Pi for the next eight days to come. Deep diving into the game bosses everything. Also, if I get your souls-like attention, how about an Elden Ring story?